The colorless solution on the left is a solution of zinc. The solution on the right that's colored is a solution of copper. I'm taking some copper metal and I am placing it in the solution of zinc. So copper metal in solution of zinc and now I'm taking some zinc metal and I'm placing it in the solution of copper. If I look, I don't see any residue forming on the copper metal, which means that the reaction between solid copper and aqueous zinc is not spontaneous. On the other hand, if I look at the strip of zinc, I see some copper has plated onto it, which tells me that the reaction between dissolved copper and solid zinc is indeed spontaneous. All right, we just looked at two reactions. In the first reaction, we took some solid copper and we placed it in some dissolved zinc that was colorless. And I was testing to see if the zinc metal that was dissolved would plate out on the copper to form solid zinc. And if that happened, then some of the copper would have to end up dissolving. And we observed this not to happen. In the second experiment, we took some solid zinc, which was silver in color, and we placed that in some dissolved copper, which was bluish in color. And when we did that, we saw some of the solid copper actually played out on the zinc metal. Uh, we weren't able to see that some of the zinc metal actually dissolved and went into solution. What we'd like to be able to do is to predict uh, which of these two processes would, would actually happen. You should recognize both of these are redox reactions, right? We've got, in this case, copper oxidation and zinc reduction, whereas in this case you have zinc oxidation going along with copper reduction. And it turned out that it was in this case that the overall reaction was spontaneous. Now how can we predict this? We're going to predict this by calculating what's known as the cell potential. And we do that by using the standard reduction potentials uh, found in Appendix M in the back of your text. I want you to recognize when you're using this table, it deals with reduction half reactions. It says it right there in the name, standard reduction potentials. And all of these are listed. You'll see they're all listed as reduction. So electrons are on the reactant side. So here... Two electrons are going into fluorine gas to produce fluoride ion. And that happens very easily, and I can tell that from that big number there, that big positive number, that tells me this reduction happens very easily. As you start to go to more negative numbers, such as what you might see over here, when you start to see negative reduction potentials, that tells you that the half reaction as listed as a reduction does not happen very easily. Actually, it happens a little easier in the reverse direction. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, let's take the case where it was spontaneous in this, this case. I'm going to write the reduction half reaction first. Let's see, that's the copper 2 going to copper metal. So it's going to be copper 2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons goes to solid copper. And I should be able to look this up in the table. And that'll always be the case. Whenever you have a redox reaction, you should be able to look up the half reactions in the table. Let's see where we've got it. Here it is. See that? Copper 2 plus 2 electrons going to solid copper. And I have the standard reduction potential here. This is in units of volts. So that's a positive 0.34 volts. I'm going to write that down. So I'm going to write this as E0 equals positive 0 0.34 volts. A volt, by the way, is a joule per coulomb, where coulomb's a unit of charge. So it's how much energy per charge are you getting. All right, now I'm going to write the oxidation potential. Excuse me, I'm going to write the half reaction for the oxidation. The oxidation... That's going to be zinc metal going to zinc 2 plus. So I'm going to write zinc solid goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And this is aqueous. And I need to look up the cell potential for that. Well, I'm not going to find this in this chart because this chart only lists reduction potentials. But I can find the reverse of this 
right? If I if I ran this reaction in this direction, that would be zinc two plus plus two electrons, so that'd be a reduction if we were heading in this direction. So I need to look up this oxidation half reaction, but I need to see it as a reduction in the table. And I hope you see this is going on right there, down there at the bottom. Zinc metal, if I go in this direction, that should go to two electrons and zinc two plus. So notice, again, in this table, the reduction potential, so everything's going to be written as a reduction. So when I'm looking for the oxidation half reaction, I have to see all of these in reverse. And that's what I'm seeing, solid zinc going to two electrons and zinc two plus. So I reverse this reaction, that means I better reverse this sign. So instead of a negative 0.76 volts, I'm going to write this as a positive 0.76 volts. So make sure we pay attention. Zinc solid going to zinc 2, positive 0.76. Aha, zinc metal going to zinc 2. I need to write that as a positive 0 0.76 volts. You're always going to flip the sign for the oxidation half reaction. All right, let's add these together. Two electrons balance. On the reactant side, I've got copper 2 plus plus zinc solid. So I've taken care of both of these. That's going to go to copper metal plus zinc 2 plus. And notice that this reaction here and this reaction here are identical. The one that's spontaneous. If I add these together, which is what you'll next do, you add these up. If I add these two reactions, I add the cell potentials. That's going to come out to a positive 1.10 volts. And so we see that if we calculate a positive cell potential, that's going to be spontaneous. That's going to relate to, however, a negative delta G. You remember that? Negative delta Gs are spontaneous. And there's actually an equation that relates delta G with the cell potential. It looks like this. Delta G is negative. And which is the number of electrons transferred times some constant we'll worry about later. We're not going to worry about it now. Times the cell potential. So it's a negative sign there. Makes it so that a negative, excuse me, a positive cell potential is spontaneous. And a negative delta G is spontaneous. On the other hand, if we get a negative cell potential, that's going to be non-spontaneous. And remember, that's going to relate to a positive delta G. And that makes sense through this equation that I just wrote here, right? If I've got a negative cell potential, the negative of a negative is a positive. Delta G positive, that's, that's not spontaneous. So this reaction was not spontaneous. Let's, let's do the same analysis here. So I'm going to write this top non-spontaneous reaction as the sum of two half reactions. First, the reduction, which is going to be zinc 2 plus to zinc 0. It's going to look like this. Zinc 2 plus dissolved plus 2 electrons goes to solid zinc. And the cell potential for that. Zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to zinc solid. That's going to be a negative 0.76 volts. All right. Now we're going to do the oxidation half reaction. That's going to be the copper, right? Copper 0 going to copper 2 plus. So we got copper metal going to copper 2 plus dissolved. Better put my two electrons in there to keep the, the charge balance. Okay, I'm going to look up the cell potential for the reduction of copper 2, and then I'm going to flip the sign, because this is written as an oxidation. And remember, this table only lists reduction potentials. So let's see. I'm not going to use this one, because it's copper 2 plus 1 electron giving me copper positive. That's not what I'm looking at. This is what I'm looking at, right? I'm looking at solid copper going this way to copper 2 and 2 electrons. That's what I wrote, so this is one I want to use. This is the reduction, but we need the oxidation. So we flipped it, so I better write a negative 0.34 volts. You always flip the oxidation. If I add these together, two electrons cancel. Zinc 2 plus, plus 2 
plus solid copper. There we go. That's going to give me solid zinc. That's that. And copper 2 dissolved. I add those together. The cell potential for this reaction, if I add those together, that's a negative 1.10 volts. That negative cell potential tells me that this is a non-spontaneous reaction, which relates to the experiment that we just saw.